These are questions 41 to 60 of the motorbike specific section of the free road code practice website at drivingtests.co.nz. What effect does an oncoming heavy vehicle have? The answer is B. The wind will initially push you away, then suck you towards the vehicle. What's the maximum speed when towing a motorcycle? The maximum speed is 30 km per hour. When carrying a load on your motorcycle, what's the maximum distance in front and behind that your load can extend? The answer is 1 meter each way. Which of these scenarios can make it easier to skid? Check all that apply. Slightly overinflated tyres will have less of a contact patch with the road, so this can make it easier to skid. Underinflated tyres, though, have a greater contact patch with the road, and so if they're only slightly underinflated, you will get slightly more grip. Applying the brakes hard can lock the wheels. A shaded corner in winter could be frosty or wet, where the sun hasn't got to it to either melt the frost or evaporate the water. Changing direction quickly also makes it easier to skid because you can exceed the lateral grip of the tyres. When towing, if your trailer including its load is up to half the weight of your motorcycle, what's the maximum speed you can ride? The answer is 90 km per hour. If your motorcycle was first registered in New Zealand or overseas less than six years ago, how often does it require a warrant of fitness inspection? The answer is 12 months. Any vehicle that was registered after 1st of January 2000 only has to have 12 monthly warrant of fitness inspections. When riding in groups, what's the formation in which you ride called? Groups should ride in staggered formation. Staggered formation is where the rider in the second position rides so that the first rider doesn't obscure their view, and then the rider in the third position rides so that the second rider doesn't obscure their view, and so on. If you must slow in a curve, how should you do this? You should use both brakes gently. Some motorcycle instructors advise that you only use the rear brake in this situation, but this contradicts NZTA's information on this question, so if you get this question in your test, make sure that you answer use both brakes gently. If you encounter rough, uneven surfaces, what should you do to keep control of your machine? Check all that apply. Keeping your head up allows you to see obstacles that are coming towards you. You shouldn't fight to control the bike's every move. A little bit of movement of the bike underneath you is fine. If there are wheel tracks, ride in the left-hand track. This gives you more of a buffer as you're further away from the lane with traffic coming towards you. To avoid skidding on slippery road surfaces, what can you do? Check all that apply. Using the back brake only increases your risk of skidding. You should ride at a slower speed, especially on curves, and brake earlier than usual and allow more time. Use the front brake first, but try and avoid braking in the corners if possible. If your helmet gets dirty, what must you clean it with? Soap and water are the best things to clean your helmet with, as commercial cleaning products and solvents can weaken the shell. What items are a motorcyclist required to wear by law? Check all that apply. A helmet is required by law, but none of the others are. However, it's a good idea to have gloves and a reflective vest and long trousers and boots, because these will provide more protection for you not only when you're riding, but if you come off in an accident. On a high crowned road, what might be likely to happen and in what situation should you reduce speed? 
a high ground road is where the centre of the road is higher than the edge of the road. So as you turn right and the centre of the road is on your right, there's more risk that your right peg might hit the road. So D is the correct answer. Because the road effectively slopes downwards towards the edge, as you're turning right, you'll have slightly less grip. If you get a blowout or puncture on your motorcycle, what should you do? Check all that apply. Gradually close the throttle and let the motorbike slow down without braking, or braking gently. Shift your weight back as far as you can if the front tyre goes flat. And sit normally if the rear tyre goes flat. You should also hold the hand grips firmly to maintain control. What's the maximum speed on the open road for a learner motorcyclist? It's 100 km per hour. You're riding on a suburban street and a large piece of timber is immediately in front of you and there's no alternative but to ride over it. To keep control, what should you do? Check all that apply. You shouldn't put your weight over the front wheel because you want the front wheel to ride over the piece of timber. So rise slightly in your seat and straighten up the bike. Also, you'll need to keep tight hold of the hand grips as the front wheel hits the timber. When riding in groups, where would you place beginner riders? It's best to place beginner riders at the front of the group. This means that experienced riders can keep an eye on them. And also, the beginner riders don't feel the need to ride beyond their means to keep up with more experienced riders. What's the correct fit and style for your helmet? Select all that apply. It should fit snugly, not too tight or too loose. It should always be fastened when riding. It's ideally a bright colour, such as white, orange, yellow or red. It should have some red reflective material on the back and sides. And none of the internal padding or straps should be frayed or loose. If a dog rushes out in front of you, what should you do? Swerving to try and miss it can put you in the path of oncoming traffic or can cause you to skid. It's actually best to slow down as much as possible, but don't avoid hitting it if there's no other option. You're less likely to be injured hitting a small animal such as a dog as you are hitting an immovable object or another vehicle. The driver of a vehicle immediately ahead of you cannot see you in either the rear view mirrors or by turning their head. Where would you be? You're in that driver's blind spot 